We've already done two separate videos for the GTX 1060 and its two SKUs and the RX 480 and its two SKUs. Those videos are on the channel, the articles are online, but basically they were four gigabyte versus eight gigabyte 480 and six gigabyte versus three gigabyte 1060. Today, we're taking the low end SKUs of each and doing a head to head directly between the three gigabyte 1060 and revisiting the four gigabyte RX 480 for benchmarks in games. Before getting to that coverage, this content is brought to you by Antec and their new Cube Mini ITX case, which is a small form factor enclosure capable of fitting a full custom loop, and you can learn more in the link below. To quickly recap the differences between these two cards and what we're calling their base models, that would be the 6GB and the 8GB versions, the GTX 1060 3GB is the card that we already looked at versus its 6GB alternative and basically said it should actually have a different name. And that was because this is more than just a halving of the VRAM. So it's more than six to three gigabytes. It is also 10% fewer SMs, which means fewer cores, 10% of them. And you also lose some TMUs as a result of that. So it is a slightly different processor than what's found on the GTX 1066 gigabyte card. And the RX 480, on the other hand, uh, depends on what model you're buying. This one is a bit more variable because the AIB partners have some say in pre-overclocks, things like that but the base model, which most of the AIB partners are selling, obviously you've got half the VRAM, four gigabytes. The only other difference is a slower memory speed. So this one operates at about seven gigabits per second, whereas the eight gigabyte model is always at eight gigabits per second or thereabouts. So those are the differences. For the most part, the memory speed doesn't impact too much. In some games like Doom, we actually do see a difference, but it's not too common. Uh, and then the SM performance is gonna impact everything. So testing methodology is defined in the article linked in the description below if you want to learn about how we tested these cards. For the 1060 and the 480, we used a stock card for each of them. So stock clock rate 1708 megahertz, and then stock clock rate for the 480 as well. It was not modified. We didn't use AIB partner cards. So these are basically out of box, obviously. And I know this, and many of you will point this out. AIB partner cards for either one of these could be pre-overclocked, and that would impact performance pretty heavily in clock-sensitive games. We're doing stock cards. Uh, if you want to look at AB Partner model performance relative to other cards on the bench, you can check our reviews of the individual cards, MSIs, EVGAs, or whatever other partner you may be looking at. So links in the description below for drivers, test methodology, and previous content on the RX 488 versus four gigabyte and 1063 versus six gigabyte. Getting to the benchmarks though, Gears of War 4 is the first on our bench. This is a Windows Store title that operates on DirectX 12, which we've recently tested in a separate benchmarking video and article across multiple GPUs. We have to use PresentMon to test this game that is built by Intel and Microsoft, hooks into the system pretty directly, and then we leverage our own in-house scripting to analyze the frame time data. This produces the usual 1% and 0.1% low numbers that you're used to from our content. At 1080p with ultra settings, the GTX 1063 gigabyte card operates at nearly 115 FPS average, with 1% low performance at about 87 FPS and 0.1% at about 76 FPS. The RX 484 gigabyte unit performs at nearly 104 FPS average, pretty close, but about 10% slower than the 1063 gigabyte card and sustains at lows with tighter timing than the head-to-head -head competition. That said, at this frame rate throughput, the differences are largely inconsequential. Moving on to 1440p, Gears of War 4 at Ultra remains playable on each device, though frame rate is dragged down to 75 average on the 1060 and the RX 480 down to 68 FPS average. The low percentage performance is just shy of 60 FPS on the 1063 gigabyte, but the output is tight enough for each device that the perception of the fluidity of the frames is largely the same with each GPU. That said, the 1060 is the victor in this particular benchmark, performing approximately 10% faster than the RX 484 gigabyte card, and we'll move on to Doom to see if that changes anything. We tested Doom with both Vulkan and OpenGL APIs. We'll start with OpenGL results at 1080p. The GTX 1063 gigabyte card is humming along at 112 FPS average for Doom with 76 FPS 1% low and 66 0.1% low performance. The RX 480 4 gigabyte meanwhile is hitting playable frame rates but sits far behind what the GTX 1060 is capable of. The RX 480 is operating at around 80 FPS average with low frame rates timed tightly and around 60 FPS, so that's a good thing. 
and the 1060 is a clear winner here, but if we switch to Vulcan, things change a bit. With Vulcan at 1080p, the RX 480 is now just 3 FPS behind the GTX 1060, and both are performing effectively equally when looking at gameplay, frame time deltas, and frame rates overall. This lands the RX 480 just a couple percent off of the 1060. If you're running an RX 480 and Doom, obviously it's time to switch to Vulkan. 1440p with OpenGL shows a similar disparity between the GTX 1060 3GB and RX 480 4GB cards as in the first test, and swapping to Vulkan again changes our output to be pretty similar between the two with 72fps average on the RX 480, and that's just marginally behind the GTX 1060. Each card produces exceptionally tightly timed low values with Vulkan, also a trend between 1080 and 1440. With Black Ops 3 at 1080p high settings, we're seeing the RX 480 4GB card lead the GTX 1060 card by about 14 FPS in the averages, though AMD does have less reliable frame time performance. The variance in frame times occasionally manifests itself in stutters during gameplay. They don't happen every single test pass, but they do happen somewhat sporadically. And this is more of a driver side issue than a VRAM issue since the GTX 1063 GB does not exhibit the same behavior. And we've already seen this in the past when we did our initial 4 vs 8 GB RX 480 benchmark. This is where you'll have to make a judgment call because the RX 480 does have better overall FPS than the GTX 1060 objectively when looking at the averages but the occasional stutter will impact gameplay and whether or not you care about that is sort of up to you, though it's one of those things where the stutters are not too frequent, you'll definitely still see a few per match if you're playing the game regularly. At 1440p, we're seeing similarly variable performance with occasional stutters, but overall superior frame rate throughput to the GTX 1063 GB card. The gap is approximately 11 FPS average, favoring AMD, or about 16.5%, again, in favor of the RX 480 4GB card for the average FPS. Stutters are a pain, but can be somewhat compensated for with settings tuning within Black Ops 3. Moving on to GTA 5 at 1080p, we're seeing a performance throughput of 89.3 FPS average on the 1063GB card versus 83.7 on the RX 480 4GB card. The low performance is greater than 60 FPS for 1% values on the 1060 with 56 FPS 0.1% low performance. The RX 480 4GB is using its now fixed GTA 5 driver update, so this is not the drivers that it launched with where we had some issues with GTA 5. That puts the card at 57.7 FPS average for 1% lows or just below 50 for 0.1% lows. The 1440p performance shrinks the gap a little bit as we're becoming bound elsewhere in the system by what these cards are capable of doing. And the GTX 1063 GB operates north of 60 FPS for its average with dips tightly timed and around the 50 FPS mark. The 484 GB card is also around 60 for its average, though its low performance dips down to 36 FPS, 0.1% lows in some of the more abusive scenarios for the benchmark. So again, we're looking at an event where basically AMD's got some driver kinks to work out to hopefully improve the, the low frame time performance in the future. Mirror's Edge Catalyst is an interesting test case because we've seen some issues with lower VRAM capacities when testing hyper settings in the past. Our main test is still with Ultra at 1080p and the GTX 1060 3GB card leads marginally with 2FPS gap that is effectively invisible to the player, so this is really not of any consequence. And what's not invisible is the frame time variance. Again, frame times are gapped enough on the RX 480 4GB card that we're seeing less than 30 FPS in the heaviest stutters. Remember, it's that frame to frame delta that becomes observable as a stutter in gameplay and that creates the more jarring throughput in terms of your frame rates and how fluid they look. The same is true for hyper settings, though you're really not going to be playing with hyper setting on either card because it's far too VRAM intensive and just taxing on the shaders in general. The GTX 1063GB card generally, at least in these tested games, has more consistent frame time performance than its direct competition, the RX 44GB card. In the past, we've shown some games like Assassin's Creed Syndicate where you'll actually see a difference in performance based on VRAM and VRAM consumption. We did not have those games here because we've already looked at them, and this video is obviously for people who are already looking at these two specific devices to buy. If you don't know about what I'm talking about, basically Assassin's Creed Syndicate and a couple of other games we've seen, uh, Black Ops sometimes, 1440p, will have results that have poorer 
0.1% low and 1% low performance, and that's a result of VRAM being eaten up and the cards basically cashing out, for lack of a better phrase. But you can learn about that more in our previous content. So the 1060 here does have generally more consistent frame times, but the AMD RX 480 is a very good competition, and that is especially true in Doom when enabling Vulkan. If you feel like overclocking, you could do some changes, obviously, to either one of these devices to make it a bit better still but that's something we're not really going to look at too heavily because one already looked at the overclocking performance in our reviews and two if you overclock one you might as well overclock the other and we're going to end up with more or less the same gap because the overclocking headroom is marginal at best for both uh, and that also depends heavily on AAB partners and things like that which we're not looking at today so performance overall the rx 484 gigabyte has better average performance in black ops 3 despite its worse frame times you'll have to decide if you want to deal with the stutters or if you want to tweak your settings to be a bit lower in some cases for Black Ops 3 to be more fluid, but that's one case where this is better and Call of Duty does generally have a bit better performance on AMD than we've seen in other games compared to Nvidia. So that's one use case for uh, Doom. Again, it comes down to if you're using Vulkan or not. Mirror's Edge, we see some of the frame time performance issues coming out with the RX 480, but you can dip your settings down to compensate. And then other games like Gears of War 4, which is a DirectX 12 title, do allow AMD to stretch its legs a little bit and improve the frame time performance because it is a newer API and AMD tends to do well with the low overhead APIs that are starting to hit the market now. Each device can handle 1080p with ultra settings and really for the most part they can handle 1440p with higher ultra settings as well. So they're both good cards in terms of their $200 price point and it really does just come down to that price. The RX 480 isn't a bad option despite its frame time inconsistency compared to the GTX 1060 which is performing pretty well here. But we were able to find both units available for $200 or 199 and thereabouts. The RX 470 is also worth a consideration if you can find one for 180 or less because that's really the only point where it competes. But that is a good alternative if you're trying to save money. 1050 Ti will be reviewing it soon and we've already announced uh, its specs, posted them from NVIDIA's announcement this week. So the GTX 1063 gigabyte, despite our issues with its naming and market positioning, as described in a previous video, is doing well for its unique price position and uh, the RX 480 does okay. Uh, you may want to do some memory overclocking though if you're playing Doom, but otherwise that's what we've got for the data. You've got all the numbers, so I'll let you make your decisions from here. As always, Patreon link the post roll video if you want to help us out directly. Links in the description below for more information. Subscribe for more content. I will see you all next time. Uh, and then the SM performance is going to impact everything. Hello?